kitchen and about two weeks ago I picked up a 12 inch lodge cast iron skillet brand new from a store and different opinions that you know you get from cast iron all the time everyone says something different what I found is just try try things and see what works best for you so on this I was asking if people usually re to strip them and reseason them because they come seasoned seasoned with canola oil Half people said yes, half people said no. So I went the lazy way and I just started using it and cooking on it. No problems at all whatsoever, I have to say. So, unless it's used, I don't see a reason to re to strip and reseason a brand like Lodge. I was at the thrift store yesterday and I found this for four bucks. It's a Pioneer Woman brand, which I didn't know much about. I guess they're made in China though. Uh, obviously used. It's got a little bit of rust, a little bit of crap still stuck on. I'm guessing someone bought it and didn't really know what they're doing and didn't like it. I don't know, but four bucks, great. Um, same size as the lodge. The biggest difference really are these like these pouring slots are bigger and the handle's longer, which I kind of like because that 12-inch skillet gets pretty heavy when it's hot and you know when it's coming out of the oven, you gotta use two oven mitts. So it's the longer handle is a little bit easier to manage it. Um, so I'm going to get to stripping off the seasoning, restoring it, and reseasoning it. Um, now I hear a lot of people talk about sanding it down with a with a sandpaper or a wire wheel to get a, a smoother surface. This is I don't feel it being bumpy to be honest. Yeah, I've never had a problem with that with the lodges either. So I never really consider doing that since I already have a 12 inch skillet I'm gonna try it on this one we're gonna do that next sand it down a bit and see if it makes any difference which I'm skeptical about but don't know until you try it so um, I'm gonna first hit this with some soap and water then some steel wool and then get to the sandpaper I'm guessing that rust is not that bad I'll find out soon enough if it's really bad with the rust what I found works good is a uh, Soak it in a bath of uh, half water, half white vinegar. That works as an acid and gets rid of the rust. No need to make an e-tank or a lye bath for something in this condition. So I'm going to get started on this and we'll take a look at the progress as I go. All right, so I just hit it with some soap and hot water with a, like a scrubber sponge. I already got a lot of the rust out on the inside. There's still some in the back and I have a feeling this the hardest part is probably going to be where the engraving is. Um, but shouldn't be too much work um, to clean it. I did a review on this thing a while ago. Got it for like three bucks from China. Uh, this chainmail scrubber, and I have to say it has been very useful for cleaning. I don't use it all the time. I just use it when I need it. You know, when there's food stuck on. And this does the job pretty well. I mean, it's not a whole lot different than using an abrasive sponge doesn't damage my seasoning. I hear a lot of people complain about they're going to damage their seasoning with it. It doesn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's still holding up, not rusting, no problems with it whatsoever. Comes in useful. So first, I'm just going to start hitting it with some steel wool, some elbow grease. Slowly but surely that's working, but I like to work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of vinegar and water on this, let it soak 20, 30 minutes, and then come back to it. All right, so 20, 30 minutes with the vinegar and water made it a lot easier. That rust came off much, much easier. You can start to see the gray iron underneath this uh, seasoning. Scrubbed it a bit with uh, steel wool after soaking it and really didn't take much work at all. I'm not going to put too much effort into it here because I'm going to do what I normally wouldn't do and take a sander to it, just to the surface here. So this is, a, I think, like 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. It's kind of old, but should do the trick. You just want to light sanding to kind of smooth the higher edges. Okay, so honestly, I'm not, I don't see where that's going to be any benefit to do. I'm mean, sure it took off the seasoning really well. <laughs> Doesn't feel that much different to me. It's pretty smooth. I don't know. Uh, but 
We'll find out if it's worth doing or not. I'm just gonna hit a couple spots. It's kind of hard to get in here with the, some battery in the way. Get all the angles. I think that's good. So now it's ready to season it. I gotta go to the store, so I'm not gonna do it right now. It's, weather's weird. It's sunny one minute, windy next. But I think I'm gonna go fish a little bit too. So I'll go fish for an hour or two get some stuff from the store and I haven't decided what oil I'm going to use yet either canola oil or um, sunflower oil that's what I got here so those both will work fine people overthink the oil too much what I like is a neutral oil that works good and canola oil is the cheapest go-to thing and yeah I mean this isn't the way I normally do this but it works pretty good it's a very quick and easy lazy way to do it so I wouldn't recommend doing this to like a vintage or antique but this is made in China I believe I've contacted the company through their Facebook page they sent me to their didn't answer my question they just sent me to a email for their customer support forwarded that to them and they sent me another email to their manufacturer to ask so they're not very helpful <laughs> but I do believe this is made in China, so hopefully this will get rid of any uh, coronavirus. And I'm just going over where I see a little bit of rust. There. All right, I think that's good enough. Then I go fish, come back, and we'll season this. Then we'll cook on it. All right, so now to season this. Um, I'm just using sunflower oil. That's what I happen to have. That'll work. Canola oil. Grapeseed oil is great. Flaxseed oil I didn't care for as much. It kind of stinks and tends to flake. So I got the oven preheated to 175 Celsius. It's 350 Fahrenheit. I heated up my skillet just a little bit. Not so it's like hot, but just um, enough to kind of open the pores a bit. It helps to get the oil in for the first coat. Just need a little bit. Use a clean rag or a paper towel, whatever, to just, you want to coat the whole pan. including the handle, everything, and the bottom. So make sure everything's coated. Like I say, you don't really need a lot of oil because the next step is you're gonna try to wipe off all the oil that you just put on there. Otherwise, it's gonna bead and be sticky and doesn't come out right. That's good. Then I just take another paper towel and wipe off as much of the oil as you can. All right, so that's going to go in the oven now. I'm going to put it in upside down in the middle rack. You might want to put a piece of baking paper or foil underneath in case any oil drips. That's going to go in for an hour. Then you're going to turn the oven off and let it come cool down naturally. And that's the first cycle. You could do two, three cycles. I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna do at least two. I'll probably do three cycles on this just to get it over with. Cause I don't think I'll be using this one all the time. So better to get a good start on the seasoning. So into the oven we go. We'll come back after the first run in about an hour. All right, so finish the first cycle of seasoning. You can see it's starting to get a darker color to it now. Gonna just repeat the whole process. Hit it with another coat of oil. Oven at 350 Fahrenheit, 175 Celsius for an hour. And I think I'll actually do three cycles to season it because, like I said before, I'm probably not going to be using this one all the time. So we'll get this finished up, put back in the oven, and check it after the second cycle's done of seasoning. Okay, just finished the second cycle of seasoning. 
looking good, but I'm going to do at least a third, maybe even a fourth. So we'll come back after the next season or next cycle. Okay, after cycle number three, I'm going to go ahead and do cycle number four. Repeat. Oh, that's a lot of oil. Too much. And back in the oven for another hour. Okay, so this has been three cycles of seasoning in the oven. Starting to look better. Since I sanded it down and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and do a fourth coat. Season it again. Not really necessary. I could just start cooking on it, but it won't hurt either. So we'll go ahead and put that in the oven for another cycle. So fourth cycle in the oven for seasoning is completed. Uh, I think that's enough. No point to do a fifth. I thought I could, but uh, it's looking good. And I mean, when you're seasoning a cast iron for the first time or reseasoning it, don't be afraid if it's not perfectly black like this. That will come naturally just by cooking in it, of course. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and break this in and cook in it. I've got some cured beef that is going to go in the slow cooker, so I'm going to go ahead and sear that on this to break it in. It's good to use some fatty food to, to break in your skillet. So that will be a good way to start. So we're going to give the skillet its first test run. Stripped it and reseasoned it four times. Four cycles in the oven. This nice piece of smoked and cured beef. We're going to go ahead and give that a sear because I'm going to put that in the slow cooker. And I got some jalapeno and some green chilies. That I also like to kind of sear a little bit before I put it in the slow cooker. Just give that nice flavor. And what's sticking there is that it's that paste I put on the outside. So it's normal. Even in my well seasoned pans, it'll do that. Meanwhile, which I forgot to do, I put my slow cooker on high. The carrots and onions are already in there. So that's just to get the initial heat coming up. Then I'm gonna, once everything's in, I'll put it to low and it's gonna stand for at least eight hours. I can sear all the sides. Should be good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that meat in. Peppers. And now I want to add a little bit of, um, usually I'd use beef broth, but I just realized I'm, I'm out. So I'm going to use some chicken broth. Not a lot, just about a coffee cup full. Because I don't want to like boil the meat. I want to it. That meat's already seasoned really well. Don't really have to add anything in there. I'll check it later, but I think it's fine. I'm just gonna pour that in because it's sitting on like a bed of onions and carrots right now. So just a little bit of moisture to get in there. Mmm, that's the smoky smell is coming out. That smells great. And that's really it. I'm just going to pour this into the crock pot and let it go for a good eight hours or so. We'll come back when it's ready. I can't wait. And a final test for the seasoning. Threw a couple fried eggs on and let's see, do they slide? Yes. So 
but I think it's well seasoned. Well, I was considering to kind of add to this video and see after I cook on this for a while how much I like it, but I think that egg test just concluded it. it works fine. I don't know if it's the sanding or seasoning it four times, but yeah, I have problems with my eggs sliding on half of my skillets, so I can't complain for four bucks. Not bad. I mean, I don't know how it came straight out of the box, but there's no such thing as really bad cast iron, is there, I guess, unless it's got lead in it. Um, so that's it. Um, I'm working on a video now that'll be up soon with some uh, cured beef, where I made a big thing of cured beef that was cold smoked, and now it's in the slow cooker for about almost eight hours now, and it's smelling amazing. That'll be up soon. So make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, leave comments. And this actually is like about a year now since I've been doing this channel. So I just realized that just now. Um, almost 150 subscribers. Going slow, but that's how YouTube works lately, it seems like. So share my videos, get me more subscribers. That helps. I'll keep doing them anyways, but that always helps. Till next time. Mm -hmm.